Hey guys, welcome back from Classic Work. Hopefully got another good one for y'all today. This is a rear axle out of a 2388 case combine. And as you can tell right there, she's had a, a little bit of a come apart. So this is gonna be a hope, hopefully a quick and dirty video on doing some some repair on something like this I don't know if y'all can tell but uh she uh she's pretty good and bent I don't know if you can see it a little bit offset right there actually a good bit so and you can see the bow here so if you are looking at it this is the top of the axle if it was laid over 90 degrees this way this would be where all your weight bearing was was going pretty much so I'm gonna give you some ideas on how to fix something like this. Um, this is the first one I've ever seen that's broke like this. Um, I think they had a, a recall on some of these because they were breaking. You put grain extenders or something on the combine and it can't handle that kind of weight, especially trying to jump a ditch and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, so the game plan is this is pretty good size thickness is 3 8 plate I think uh, this is like two pieces of of angle iron well fabricated piece that's been welded together to give it that that inside box structure and what we're gonna do is is since it is bent we're gonna go ahead and finish cutting a section of it out and get it back straight and then we'll bevel it all out and all that jazz and do a full penetration weld to get it back to where it was and then we'll put some some scab pieces on there to to beef it up again so it don't it don't happen again so that's that's the game plan so should be good a lot of cutting involved a lot of straightening a lot of fitting so should be a pretty good little video okay so basically what i'm gonna do is is i'm gonna finish this crack wherever it goes we're just gonna cut it out pretty much and it's not going to be pretty or symmetrical or anything like that. All we're trying to do is separate the two pieces so we can get them back straight again. I've used this technique quite a bit um, for refitting broken pieces. As long as it don't have a lot of twist in it, let's hope it don't. We'll get it to fit back together and we'll tack it in a couple of places and then we can V out wherever the crack is. And that way all of it will go back together like it's supposed to. But uh, it's worked on a lot of stuff. We'll see if it works on this today. Let me pull you up to speed. So, what I've done is, this is gonna be a stiff back that's gonna lay on top. It's not in the right orientation, but I got it clamped on here trying to hold all this crap straight. Okay, if you can see, we've got a pretty bad gap here, you know, as far as being straight with itself. But up here, we're pretty good. And if you side it, because this is the top, side it down here you can see we're pretty straight looks pretty good so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tack on this corner 
up here and then what we'll do is we'll try to see if we can pull this in that way to get all that line back up because you can see how far off it is and then what it'll do is it'll pull this side over and we should be pretty straight after that so I'm gonna put a good heavy tack up here we're gonna use the wedge technique I'm gonna weld on a dog and then we'll try to wedge it out this way hopefully it won't pull anything too bad out of out of straightness but yeah that looks that looks really good I'm gonna tack it right there all right so just letting you know what I'm doing nothing gain so I'm gonna go ahead and tack that So we've got pretty decent alignment. Our crack is pretty consistent. So that's looking good to me. So what we're gonna do now, 
double check, make sure everything looks as straight as we can get it. It's looking, it's looking pretty good, pretty all right. So, now then, now that we've got it established, we got four tacks on it, we've bought it, pretty much is what they say in the field. So what I'm gonna do now is take a grinder and grind me a good trough all the way around the crack. If I can't get it with a grinder, I may have to carbon gouge it. I'll find out here in a minute, but I'm hopefully I ain't gotta do that. And when I get it good and V'd out, we'll put an open root pass, a 6010 in it, and then cap it with a 7018. We'll leave the well protrude anywhere that's in this side, and then all these will grind down flat because we're gonna have reinforcement go on them. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much what I'm gonna do in a nutshell. I'm gonna grind all this. I'm not gonna bore you all to tears with all that. And then I'll set up the weld and show you what I'm gonna do. All right, there you go. Feed out good enough. This side's gonna do really well. We got a few big gaps in there, but nothing serious. It ain't. The other side is the worst side, but I think it's gonna go right in there just fine. As long as this metal don't act terrible, we should be in good shape. So, 60 10, about 100, 100 amps, 110 amps. Third gear, 50% for you pipeliner guys out there. And uh, let's get after it. I'm just gonna talk a little bit about what I'm actually doing here. Is if you can tell, I'm starting on one side, and then I'll move to the other, and you'll see me walk back and forth with that rod. And what I'm trying to do is move the heat around so it's not concentrated in one spot. Uh, this is a pretty common practice if you're dealing with a lot of gap, or if you're dealing with super thin metal. A lot of times, you can just walk it back and forth. You can see I'm getting all those different rod positions, I'm trying to burn you know, the least amount as I can. And you can see me stop and let it cool. This one here, I did it downhill instead of uphill because the gap was pretty, pretty good size. Since I was gonna be grinding most of it out anyways, it just seemed to work a little bit better. But you can look at some of my hand techniques. Um, I swapped the rod for pencil style right there because I was having trouble fighting some of that in there. I actually started going uphill a little bit. But just little things that you know nobody ever tells you that you can do some pretty amazing stuff with rod manipulation. It's just work that some gun around in there in all different kind of areas. So there's just a few little things I wanted to point out. Well, bring y'all back up to speed. So I got everything dialed in pretty good. It flowed in there real nice. And now I've got a plate, piece of three quarter by four, 
that we're going to put on this here is the bottom. And when we flip it over, this side right here is going to be the top. So that'll go on the bottom. That'll help with the tension, you know, that the wheels have whenever you're under load. And then what we'll do for the top is we'll put a stiff back on. Instead of laying it flat, we'll lay it vertical. And that'll help with the tension on the top. So that's what the customer wanted. Um, when Case rebuilt some of theirs, they put a stiffener just in the top, not in the bottom, but in the top. So we're going to do both. That way he don't have any problems down the road. So let me get this dude tacked up there. Well guys, I got it wrapped up. I put a, uh, a stiff back on there off camera. It, it ain't nothing to it. It's a piece of two inch by three quarter laid up on its edge. That's gonna keep, it's gonna give us some retention in this direction because all the weight's gonna go that way. I had a guy comment the other day, actually I think it was somebody in person that asked me, they said, you know, when, when do you brace something and when do you not? Because the truth of the matter is, you can make something too strong. I've seen this a bunch of times. I saw a guy one time put a half inch weld on a piece of quarter inch metal, and it failed. It broke. It, it wasn't no kind of strength in it. And he asked me why did it do that. I said, well, you put too much heat there. That, there's, that weld is just a solid mass, and that little plate had nowhere to go pretty much, so it broke right up on top of the weld. And uh, he, he couldn't understand that. You know, so I, put, I said, the well was fine, dude. You just executed it wrong. This stuff has got to move a little bit. Um, you don't want to build something so big and so heavy that it, that it, it won't flex. Because if it don't flex, it, it will break somewhere. I've seen cracks do all kinds of weird junk when, when it can't move. I mean, it's, it's unreal. But the guy was asking me, okay, when do you brace something and when do you not? When do you use a gusset? When do you use a... A stiff back when do you use you know any of that kind of stuff I want to clear up some of my terminology real quick I call these stiff backs the real term for them is actually a carpentry term it's called a strong back I don't know why I started calling them that but that, that it stuck that's what I call them from now on so anyways this is to help with retention and the truth of the matter is I would have put one on the bottom too just like this one but I think there's gonna be some clearance interference there so that's why that one's laid up like it is. Um, that is not as strong, believe it or not, as, as standing it up on edge. But uh, anyways, enough of that. Other things that you can do to make something stronger and still be able to give is, like, look at this weld right here, okay? From here to here, now if I go on the other side, you notice how much shorter it is, okay? I didn't do that on accident, I did that on purpose. What that allows you to do is your shear line of this weld is in a different location than this one is. And believe it or not, that's stronger in some instances than not doing it. I did the same thing on the other end. Not to say that this is ever gonna need that, but I did it just to show you, you know, say this one's longer than this side. I think I made both of them longer on the same side. Same thing up here in the middle. I got a really long bead on this side and I got a little shorter one on this side. So. If you break the shear line where it's actually at, that is actually more helpful than you would think. Now these here, I think I matched them. That's a little different, but you get the idea. Yeah, that one there is a little closer. But you can do little things like that and you'll be amazed on how much, you know, it's allowed to give in another location than it would. Now that's not always a good idea. Sometimes you need all that stuff paired up because if one of them fails, then the other one will too but you can move them stress points around. 
you know, just by a little bit of knowledge on knowing where to put it. But anyways, guys, I hope you got something out of it. Excuse my rambling. But, uh, yeah, uh, like, subscribe to me if you hadn't already, and to the new guys out there, keep on turning and burning. And, uh, guys, I will see you all next time from Classic Work. Y'all take care.